one day some twisted son of a bitch is bound to teach you a thing or two about living in this cold, godforsaken world. Workers at the crippled nuclear power plant in Japan's Fukushima prefecture have shut down a key water treatment system for the third time in three months. Officials at Tokyo Electric Power Company say they shut down one of the three lines of the Advanced Liquid Processing System, or ALPS, on Saturday morning. They say they made the decision because the system failed to reduce the calcium level in the water before treatment. Calcium hampers the removal of radioactive substances and has to be eliminated before water treatment. The workers suspect that a faulty filter may have caused the problem. The filter is used to remove calcium and other mineral substances. One of the three lines of the ALP system was shut down in March due to another problem with the filter. It was closed again in April when workers forgot to open a valve used to insert sodium carbonate to eliminate calcium. One of the other two lines of the ALP system has been shut down since March due to the partial loss of a filter that seriously damaged the performance. TEPCO officials initially planned to have all three of the ALPS lines operational by last month. Engineers at Fukushima Daiichi want to stop groundwater from flowing into reactor buildings and getting contaminated. They plan to do that by freezing the ground. They're testing the technique and show the media their experiment. The engineers plan to create a frozen underground wall stretching one and a half kilometers. The barrier would enclose four reactor buildings and keep out the groundwater. Workers are testing the technique on a smaller scale. They sank steel pipes around an area of 10 square meters. The pipes reached 30 meters below ground. Workers filled them with the coolant at a temperature of minus 30 degrees Celsius. A month later, the soil had frozen. I believe we've confirmed that a frozen barrier can block water. The engineers hope to start freezing the ground around the reactor buildings next month. They'll go ahead once they get approval from nuclear regulators. And up next, this is going to be a disturbing report. I just want to forewarn you. Marine mammals mysteriously dying in record numbers along the West Coast. This was posted by The Watcher on May 17, 2014. More sick and dying animals are washing up on the coast of California with new reports indicating record numbers of young sea lions, seals, and other marine mammals being admitted to care shelters for rehabilitation. The Orange County Register reports that the only facility in the county licensed to care for marine mammals is now at capacity and that other facilities all along the coastline are being similarly inundated. The normally pudgy and active creatures are increasingly turning up emaciated and dehydrated. Very sad. A mysterious phenomenon that the Sausalito-based Marine Mammal Center has monitored across a 600-mile area of coastline that stretches from Mendocino to San Luis Obispo. After washing ashore, many of these sick marine mammals are too weak to even get back in the water. Oh let alone survive on their own. Breaks your heart. We thought it was going to be a nice calm year. In the last month it just spiked, stated Melissa Siaka, the Director of Development at the Pacific Marine Mammal Center in Laguna Beach. Hundreds of ailed sea lions turned up last year as well, but the early part of this year was mostly quiet, that is until recently. The rescues just keep coming in at a steady pace. Sharp uptick in injured sea animals following Fukushima. 
According to reports, this is only the third time ever that the PMMC has been at capacity with sick animals, the first time having occurred in 2009 and the second time last year. Like in years past, the animals being rescued today exhibit the same strange symptoms, almost as if something attacked or infected their bodies, preventing them from developing normally. Once we get them nourished, they do fine out there, added PMMC Executive Director Keith Matassa, as quoted by the OC Register. In his assessment, the sea lion's mothers may not be producing enough milk, or they themselves may be getting exposed to toxins or some other damaging factor. It's all circling around food issues. Dr. Sean Johnson, director of the MMC's Veterinary Sciences Department, seems to agree. He told sfgate.com that most of the sick marine mammals being admitted to the center appear to be starving to death. Oh, hard time, folks. Either from a dearth of available food or from an inability to capture and consume it. Either way, the animals are suffering and nobody seems to know why. The ones we are seeing are basically starving to death, he told sfgate.com. It's definitely a mystery. We're hoping it's not the new norm. Sick, dying animals turning up all across Pacific Coast. Similar events are occurring elsewhere along the Pacific Coast, including in Alaska, where dozens of sea lions, whales, and other creatures recently turned dead. Researchers there believe that radiation from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster may be responsible, especially since many of the dead creatures are exhibiting signs of radiation poisoning, including unusual baldness and skin sores. A 2011 symposium on Fukushima radiation and its effects on marine life essentially predicted these outcomes, having modeled how radiation accumulation on sea ice might harm sea lions, for instance. It explained how radiation exposure in these areas represents an ongoing immunotoxic threat to these innocent creatures, not to mention the damage it can inflict on the thyroid gland and skin. Marine transported Fukushima radion nuclides may represent a new stressor to the ecosystem, reads a poster for the meeting. And the sources for this article include the following. And this is by Jonathan Benson from Natural News. You know, folks, I would think that Fukushima radiation is doing this to these animals. It's killing the feeding fish. It's killing the upper chain of the uh, marine animals and now it's killing sea lions and whales and dolphins and it's just a horrible horrible situation this Fukushima Daiichi radiation is killing our animals and our ocean not to mention people remake of Godzilla has opened in the United States Godzilla Gohira Kaju hi a theatre at a popular tourist spot was packed on the first day of the film's screening. The release of the second American remake comes 60 years after the original version hit Japanese theatres. The Japanese movies were also released in the US and other countries, becoming a major hit. The new American film is the first 3D version of the series and uses computer graphics. It was a really genius idea to make the story, I, I don't know, it's, it's really beautiful, I enjoyed it. Thank you. A six-meter sculpture of Godzilla is on display in front of the theater, drawing many people wanting to take photographs. A remote Japanese Pacific island continues to expand because of lava flow from a volcano that began erupting nearly six months ago. An NHK crew took an aerial video of Nishinoshima Island to the far south of Tokyo on Sunday. Columns of smoke are rising from two craters. One of them is spewing lava, cinders, and black smoke every few seconds. The first volcanic eruption in 40 years began in the seabed to the southeast of the island on November 20th. In December, a new landmass created by solidified lava merged with the island. 
The island is now about five times larger than it was before the eruption. Tokyo Institute of Technology professor Kenji Nogami accompanied the crew. He says the lava will continue flowing for a while and the island is likely to keep on expanding. It's unusual for a Japanese volcano to keep releasing lava for six months. I'm very surprised. Nogami says researchers will need to monitor the island and take rock and gas samples to learn more about the volcanic activity. Japan's reputation as a pacifist nation hangs in the balance, with lawmakers there now seeking to foist a new meaning on the country's post-war constitution in a bid to try to restore its military might. After Imperial Japan was defeated in the Second World War, it renounced the threat or the use of force as a means of settling international disputes, calling its military no more than a self-defense force. But now, an historic revision looms as the Japanese Prime Minister argues that his country must be better positioned to deal not only with real but also potential threats in the region. Tokyo also wants more flexibility in being able to come to the aid of its allies. The idea of the country's military taking on a more assertive role in the world caused unease then both within Japan and abroad, especially in neighboring China and South Korea. The US though supports the idea. Now let's take a look at the map. Japan is surrounded by military bases and also hosts several facilities used by the US Navy. As you can see there, Washington beefing up his presence in the region, which is rife with territorial disputes right now between several countries. And as Joseph Gerson believes, Tokyo's military ambitions are being fueled by the agenda of its American allies. The United States sees Japan as part of a process of encircling, part of a foundation for encircling China. Use Japan. Uh, to be what uh, one former prime minister uh, called an unsinkable aircraft carrier for the United States. It's been over for some time. I mean, Japan, despite its constitution saying it should have no, no military forces, uh, it has uh, a very large navy, very large air force. It's the sixth biggest military spender in the world. Uh, but it's been difficult to uh, deploy those forces abroad to, to be involved in, in, in war and uh, both under the pressure of the right wing in Japan and from the United States, there's been a process over more than 30 years now uh, to uh, really overcome the limitations of the Constitution. Amid the turmoil in Ukraine, Russia and China will hold a joint naval drill in the East China Sea next week. Russian President Vladimir Putin will attend an opening ceremony with Chinese President Xi Jinping in a move that's apparently aimed at demonstrating their country's close ties. Putin will begin a two-day visit to Shanghai on Tuesday. He'll hold talks with Xi and attend a summit of 24 countries designed to promote confidence-building measures in Asia. The drill comes amid a standoff over Ukraine between Russia and the US and European nations. Russia and China will then conduct a week-long joint naval exercise in the northern part of the East China Sea. The two countries will dispatch 16 vessels, including two submarines, along with aircraft. The exercise will include simulated attacks, escort of ships, and search and rescue operations. Last month, U.S. President Barack Obama reaffirmed that the Japan-U.S. Security Treaty covers the Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea. Japan controls the islands. China and Taiwan claim that... Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. We need to get subscribed and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the Remix button, hit the Remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.